So if you've been curious at all for how much you can actually grow in one of these two tier family rise gardens, this is month two of growing for 365 days in this garden. I'm going to be weighing everything that comes out of it so that we can actually get a good idea of how much you can grow with one of these things. I've also got some things that need to be thinned out like those tomato seedlings there. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that without having to thin them and throw them away. Because if you're like me, and that breaks your soul to throw away your little plant baby, I'm gonna be transplanting them to soil and we will let them live their best life. So this video is going to cover the entire month of February. Today is February 2nd. So we will take a look. The Sora radish are actually starting to form, form a bulb. So those guys are looking a little bit better than those guys. The Red Baron bunching chives are looking actually pretty good. The Mignonette strawberries are coming. I, I can see the actual first true leaves forming there. Those are the pineapple strawberries at the back of my avocado. We have my Antoinette lettuce in the back. Looks like just one came up, so I'm not gonna have to worry about thinning him. Cilantro's still doing nothing. I'm gonna fiddle around with those. The arugula is growing pretty good. We have this butter crunch lettuce, and I'm gonna be thinning him out today because there's too many in there. My carrots are growing well. These are some of the mini Siam tomatoes. There's actually three in there, so we're gonna take two out, just leave one. Parsley's in the back, another avocado, and we have some rosemary growing there. Down on the lower level, we have some peppers. Those are a little harder, I find, to save the seedlings when you're thinning them, but we'll give it a try. My pea, sweet mamba peppers are growing. Everything's up except for the cilantro. We have the cucumber that has its first leaves. We have the celery that's coming up. We have some of those little Bing tomatoes. Lots of dill, should probably thin that. Those are the fresh bite orange. Those are growing well. The chard and my cauliflower, which definitely needs to be thinned. To transplant the, th the thin seedlings, I'm gonna use these bootstrap farmer trays. They just redesigned these and now they have a hole in the bottom, which makes it so much nicer to push out when you're trying to get your seedlings out. And they have these grooves for the air trimming of the roots. I just picked these up. They have them in different colors too. I'll put the link down below if you guys want to check them out. I do love everything Bootstrap Farmer. So I'm going to get this filled up with soil and then we will get to work thinning out the tomatoes, the butter crunch, the other tomatoes, and some of those peppers. Okay, so that is all filled up with dirt. I'm just going to put that there. So the one thing I find about the tomatoes is they are definitely the most resilient to transplanting to soil. What you're going to want to do is try and decide on what's the strongest one. It's definitely not this guy. So I'm going to grab as low as I can and just gently pull. Now that definitely doesn't look like a lot of roots, but trust me, these guys are resilient with the tomatoes. Get them as low as you can. So I'm going to get this, bury him right down in there, pack the soil around, and they may droop and look a little sad for a day or two, but they definitely bounce back. We'll check back in on these guys later on this month and I'll show you how they're doing. I do actually need to get some labels for this too. If you guys are going to be using like these labels, make sure that you get a permanent marker. This is a garden marker. And this is so important because I have done labels before and then the sun has bleached them. Because these are going in a tray that eventually I will move outside, I want to make sure that I am using a garden marker. I'll put a link to this in the description below. So there we have it down to a single tomato. So that one will grow much happier now. I haven't tried in the lettuce before. So that guy, it didn't go so well. This guy, we got some roots. So I'll pop him in the soil with the tomatoes and we'll see if he survives. I'm not very hopeful. I just find it's always worth giving things a try because you don't ever know what's gonna work. Okay, so we are down to a single butter crunch. I got three out, we'll see how they do. So that is pretty much it for the maintenance on the top level. So down here I still need to take out some of those little Bing tomatoes. I'm gonna have to get another one of these filled up with soil. Now for thinning the peppers, it's gonna be the same thing. There is this little teeny tiny guy here. I'm just gonna take him right out. And then out of these, they both look pretty much the same. I kinda like this guy in the front better. So I'm gonna try and grab and see Oh well, you can't win them all. I'm gonna try and go through the other peppers, see if I have any more luck getting the roots. As I mentioned, the peppers are definitely more finicky than the tomatoes. She got some decent roots on that one, so we'll try transplanting him and see how he does. So there we have today's hopefuls. We will see how they do. So it is February 12th and everything is growing amazingly well. These are all of the seedlings that I yanked out and I'm actually honestly surprised every single one made it. This little guy here looked dead for at least four or five days, but he came back. So you don't have to kill them when you thin them. It was actually my first time trying it with lettuce. Definitely the first time with cauliflower and with chard. I have done it many, many times with tomatoes, but uh, the peppers surprised me. I have started some new seeds. 
So we have some Jagogia beets, some of the Caraflex cabbage. We have one of the Muscat beans, and we even have tiniest little bit of lemongrass there. The slowest guy on the block is the cilantro, but he has made an appearance finally. And these radishes need to be harvested because it has been 24 days. Technically, they can be harvested about 15. I have my scale, which is very dusty. We'll pop the scale over there. I'll give these guys a harvest. Ooh. My little radish. Just got these guys out. We will add them onto the scale and we have 1.2 ounces. Our first harvest. Probably going to put the beets in the front here and maybe a bean. I think the lemongrass and the cabbage will have to find another spot for somewhere down there. So check back in a couple more days. So there you see the difference. So those were taken out at the same time now to, in these guys' defense. They did have their roots ripped out, but these guys are like an inch tall. And the other mini cyan plant is like four or five inches tall. Same lettuce. Those are the same lettuces that came out of there. It's the cauliflower. You can put that next to the other cauliflower down there. And there's the chard and those are the other chard. Now is a good time to put those beets in out of the nursery and just pop them in there. I'm pretty excited for those strawberries. All right, so this is the last update for February and you will see that a lot has changed and not all of it is good. Part of the reason I want to do this and to show you guys what I can grow over a year in my rise garden is also to show some of the challenges and the things that don't go quite right. You can see there's some stuff going on here with the arugula or carrots have dies. The parsley over there has given up, cilantro as well. I lost one of my strawberries. There's some issues on the pea, the dill, celery, and the chard is suffering. So what happened? Well, it turns out my pH meter wasn't calibrated properly. Started to notice there was something going on with the dill, but sometimes I like to just wait and watch and see what's happening. Some other stuff started to go and then I couldn't figure out how to even calibrate this thing, which also says a lot because that means in the entire time I've had this, I've never calibrated it, which is a terrible thing. Sometimes from terrible things, we learn a lot. And now I know how to calibrate it in case anyone else has it. In here, there are two little screws. That one there is for pH. There's one on the other side for EC. So I had these solutions. I had the 6.86 and I'll put a link in the description where you can buy these. There's all sorts of different solutions. It's not like you need these ones. These were just some I had. And then I also have one for the 9.18. There's supposed to be one for four as well, but I couldn't find it. So I worked with what I had. Mix these up in a cup of water. What I would do is I would turn this on. I would take this out. I would put it into the pH solution. And then I would have the screwdriver in the top and turn the dial until I got this as close as possible. Now I'll be the first to admit it is still not perfect. Effect, but it just wouldn't calibrate anymore. I think the meter is pretty old and it also depends on temperature too. When I first put it in the solution, it was reading at like a 12 or something. So it was very, very far off. We can go over to the 9.18 solution and then you'll see that it's going up. So at least I knew it was reading much closer to what it was supposed to be. The water in here, because it kept reading high on here before I calibrated it, I was putting my pH down in, pretty much turned it into being filled with battery acid. <laughs> or the equivalent thereof. We are at a much better level now. Tried to compensate with some of the pH up, but it was so bad I just ended up switching out the water. That said, I learned a lot. Dill, which I like, was the first thing to indicate there was a problem. So I will probably always grow dill just as another indicator, just in case there is some calibration issues. It's good to have a little canary in the coal mine. A lot of stuff survived. I learned that the peppers are very resilient. They are covered in what will be some flowers very soon. My cucumber over there is trying to grab onto things and it's got some flowers. Bean is doing okay. The cauliflower is growing. These leaves look almost iridescent. It's so cool. Tomato is doing okay and has a lot of flowers on it. Some discoloration a little bit on the lettuce. Arugula, this is past good anyways. So I'm just gonna take that guy out. Other lettuce is okay. The one, Strawberry didn't come through unscathed, but I'm curious to see if it'll come back. Onions did okay. The beets were looking a little sickly, but they've come back. I don't think they're gonna actually throw a bulb or anything, but we'll see what happens. Lemongrass is doing all right. Rosemary's okay in the back. And some of these things, why are they still here? I was also curious to see more for the things that were a bit bigger, like said parsley or the celery down there or the chard. I wanted to see if they'd be able to make a comeback at all. I don't think they will. 
and I'll probably be switching them out in March and restarting some. But again, I like to wait and see a little bit. And this is an experiment. Suffice it to say there wasn't really a harvest <laughs> this month. I've been dealing with issues, but that will be changing as we move into March. I also remembered far too late that I had this Root Farm pH kit. And then the other thing I picked up, just to have some backups that are not reliant on batteries, are definitely not gonna be as accurate, but if you're running battery acid, like I pretty much was, then it's going to tell you that. And for somebody that's not sure they want to invest in a pH meter or they just don't have the money to, this is a much cheaper option that you can still do and keep tabs on your pH or this one as well. And I'll again, put links to these in the description. That is where we are at. Hopefully March will be a better month and we will start getting a whole bunch of harvests. I'll be able to grab some of this lettuce, so I'll get that out. And then I have some little strawberries here that are just stealing a little bit of light. They're gonna go out in the garden. If you wanna know how I clean this bad boy, then you can check out this video and I'll walk you through my whole cleaning process.